Well, it's been another week and an episode of Spike's Family has just come out. And, well, this one was certainly an interesting episode to say the least. It was seen to be the fact that what was confirmed in the first previous episode has been literally done. But the funny thing is also is the fact of the fact they are playing a tennis match. Well, I suppose the fact it's an underground tennis match. I've never seen that before. Usually I'd expect a boxing tournament or maybe... Some sort of fighting tournament, base bare knuckle boxing, basically something that is simple and easily to do. Given the fact that tennis court requires a large area, but it's an anime. I think the other thing is the fact that yes, Nightfall slash Fiona is the well, the yard array of Spike's family, with Lloyd being caught in the crosshairs. The other thing I find rather interesting as well is the fact that. It seems to fact if you are a wise agent, you could do just about anything. Even demolish tennis pros, I mean, what kind of training did they have? I think it's the fact also, I think that... <laughs> Twilight's either oblivious, or his policy is to leave work at home. Or rather, keep work and home life separate. And from what we've seen in previous things, for all we know, Lloyd could just be a kind of a bit like a 007 almost. Namely, he just has he's had multiple girlfriends over the years, but never been able to settle down. That has always been a theme with characters in some of these in similar shows with detectives and everything else. Sometimes they have a struggle marriage. Other times they just seem to move from one girl to the next and leave it at that. You know, it's pretty much the fact their life they've made the conscious decision to keep or they're married to their job basically. In other words, they don't usually go no further than that. But the interesting thing is, <coughs> I think was just the fact that I think almost was the fact the mission they were on is to get a document that could potentially cause a war. And it was basically tells us something about the war that was fought. East and West. Basically, we know for a fact that East is engaged in... Or Stanley is engaged in human experimentation. The fact that West was just as bad. Namely for the fact that it massacred POW. So... And this document could cause another conflict. That was something rather interesting at the least about the war. In other words, both sides were conflict. And the fact that in order to preserve peace, didn't the fact the war was so devastating, the document was hidden for years. But the other thing is also, I think, quite possibly... I think it was the fact of how technology is done in that world. I never would have guessed that, well, one, being a white Asian someone makes you superhuman, but also for a fact that Spy X Family has some rather interesting quirks to it. So just for example, it seems for a fact the Ostanian elite are pretty much a thing of parody unto themselves. But it was certainly something else to think just to watch the fact of the fact that the rich of Ostania seemingly let's live, milk the poor, milk the commoners for all they're worth, and then get away with it. It's quite possible just how corrupt, I think the country, I think Ostania is highly, is very much highly corrupt. But one thing I did find rather interesting was doing the tennis match, was the fact that, well, one, I think was the fact that that was, that was clearly cheating. They are literally using illegal rackets, I mean, one of them shoots out on the long string, the other one has two small engines on the back, which make it jet propelled. Just the fact they can get any shot and they manipulate them quite well. Also the fact that, we also seen a couple other things, for example, two of their opponents don't, and well, they turn into basically like, bus giant muscled men. But it turns out for a fact that even that isn't enough to beat. It turns out for a fact that probably having more muscle than about three gorillas still wasn't enough to defeat a wise agent. Because they both go crashing down. Oh, cool. Blimey, I think Nightfall needs to take a chill pill. And the fact also, I think, of possibly, yes, she might be one of Wise's assassins, if Wise does engage in that sort of thing, because she seems to think like one. She remembers all their faces, and the fact of how much she cares about Lloyd is quite interesting as well. For example, all those who throw insults at him, she remembers all their faces if she's going to take care of them later. But also the fact that Lloyd is telling her the fact that she's seen Collies go down in the field, and she seems to... I think you're over the top. I mean, that's the kind of way Yodere characters often are. But it just gets a bit bizarre. And I think that was a bit much. I think the other thing is also, I think the way Yor is in the episode. He doesn't do much at all, none of the design yet. But then, of course, it's largely focusing on Twilight and Nightfall. And it's supposed to be their episode. And I think the other thing that was quite interesting, I think it's just how well it well. Well, how well it worked. Because... The whole point is the fact that I think he prizes his antiquities collection so much that he's determined to make sure the fact that Emma does get to the final doesn't win. Although also cleaning house with all the money he's got. Although possibly maybe his siblings, his two children have not gotten to the tournament before, but he's determined to win so he can make a whole lot of money. And I think the other thing is well, they also clean house on the, from the poor as well, who lose tens of thousands. 
based on some of the lines of dialogue that I heard. But I think also, I think it's the fact that it's, a, it's pretty much a parody of underground tennis matches and it gets over the top, and but it's a good over the top and I really like that in many ways. I also like for a fact of just how rambunctious all the different characters are. I like the fact that we see a common trope done and done in a funny way, but I also don't like the fact that I, I think I don't like Nightfall's character. It's a bit overdone that. It can be overdone, especially doing sometimes, and I don't like that at all. I really find it hard, I don't say unwatchable, but done so many times, it just can get a bit stale. And it seems to be a staple of some anime these days, of one of the characters having like a really big crush on the other, of another character, and it gets to the point where it's almost like stalkerish. I mean, this is kind of stalkerish behaviour. I mean, in the real world, that would be creepy. And the fact she's, she wants to eliminate your and do other stuff as well, I mean, that's certainly going to ask a lot of awkward questions in the real world. Much more the fact, I think Lloyd likes the way he leads his life at the moment. But I guess that's it. I think also, I just like the whole idea. I like the idea of the hard ride, but probably not in the comedic sense. It does get a bit much, and the same jokes can be done over and over and over again, and it just doesn't really work. I don't know, it's primarily readers of anime and everything else, but for me, it doesn't necessarily work. I wish there was more I could say about that particular thing, but I really don't. I think I'm also think was the fact that the announcer, I mean, it's Japanese done announcing. But the other thing I also really wish they had more of in this episode, I think, was quite possibly maybe a little bit more than the other two matches, because the first one sort of filled up, took up too much time, and maybe the other thing is also, I think, just the fact of... But one thing I do like a thing about Nightfall's character, she does go over the top of it, and she does seem a bit... Obsessed with success. I think Robolsby, she wants to get closer to the Twilight, and the more successful she is, she'll get closer to her best agent, who I think that Twilight may would prefer to work alone. I mean, he does seem to do a lot like quite a fair bit. He doesn't... Every time I've seen him previously, he works solo, so that probably means the fact he works solo far better. And I think Robolsby, I think his policy is keep work and home life separate, which is probably something quite understandable given his line of work. But I think also, I think his opinions about that relationship, especially with colleagues, can compromise judgement. But outside of that, it was a good episode nonetheless, as all Spikes Family episodes have been. With that, I've been the Universal Channel. Just please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you the next one. Cheerio!